Hello, I'm Diego Lizarazo, and this is another Game Dev Adventures video. I guess I didn't change this from one of the previous ones in Spanish, but well, you get it there. That's my uh, YouTube channel, so just connect here and you're going to get most of the videos that I've been sharing, or just like go to my blog, you have it here, and you're going to have a lot of information that, that I publish here in this channel and some other news around technology. Also, you have here my Twitter. Uh, today, the idea was to create a small video around uh, a behavior, a behavior that is quite useful and, well, that I use a lot in most of my Construct 2 projects. And, and that behavior is bullet. So, right now, I just created a few things. So, a sprite that I'm just going to call it, I don't know player or whatever it could be whatever and these ones that I call walls that I, you see that I surrounded here so the first thing that I'm going to do is just to add uh, the well the behavior to uh, the player so we have it here so bullet it's a quite obvious uh, icon and uh, usually, well, the bullet basically is just an object that moves in one direction. In this case, the direction that is going to follow is towards the right, just because the angle that uh, this uh, sprite has is that one. So, so that's one of the first things. Uh, the second thing that I would like to mention is that I do use bullet a lot is because it's one of the easiest ones to, to create movement. So if you need things to move in one direction, you just use bullet and then you can figure out how to change the direction if in case that you need it. So if you just add your behavior to an object, you're going to have something like this, a sprite. So you see that it's moving in that direction. Usually I'm going to put it like a little lower so we can see the movement. Okay, that's that's a little slower, so we can have better control on that. So that's one of the first things. If you are starting to work with Construct 2, whenever you click on an object and you look on the property side, on the properties pane, you're going to see a lot of things that you can change, that you can modify, including the attributes of a behavior that may be changed. There are some behaviors that do not have anything that you can change. They, they just add certain behavior and there's nothing you can modify. So, well, that's, that's how it is. But in the case of bullet, there are several things. The first one that I already changed is the speed. So, of course, it's quite simple and it gives you, of course, at the bottom, a description of what it is. So, this is the speed in pixels. So, uh, of course, you say if I put a higher number, it's going to go faster. And if I put a slower number, then it's going to go slower. Quite simple. Also, you have the acceleration, right? So, uh, if you just want to have like a a normal movement then, then you're just going to work with the speed but if you want to accelerate it and if you want to do something like similar to like the movement of uh, let's say well gravity something falling then perhaps you can can work with this um, but of course you have gravity here that we're going to work on that for in a second but let's let's check first uh, acceleration so I'm just going to say 50 and of course this is going to accelerate the movement and perhaps that was too slow so let's say 350 so you're going to see a slow start and then it begins to move much faster so of course all these attributes you can tweak and you can modify however you want and the best way is just to test and, and figure out what you need now gravity Right now, uh, our movement is not affected by any force, but if you put some sort of gravity here, you're going to see that uh, we may end up having some sort of parabolic movement. So let's say gravity 9. You see that now it's been affected by gravity, and even though it's trying to move forward, uh, there's a force that is pulling downwards. So, well, I don't know if I make it higher 
then you see that it's affected by that and uh, what happens if I put like a negative value then of course the force is going to pull in another direction so that's it that's that's a really good one now these are the next ones are two uh, attributes that I do like I do like a lot uh, especially because they give you uh, a lot of control in, in something, especially this one, bounce of solids, uh, that you are not really expecting. So by default is no. And that's why I create these walls that you have here. These walls have the solid behavior. So if you see it here, I'm going to move this wall closer so you can see it in the screen. So if you see my bullet at the moment that it hits the wall, nothing really happens they don't really interact with each other and just to make it a little more obvious all around I'm just going to make the walls red okay so now you can see what I'm talking about and you see that it's surrounded completely by walls um, and the other thing oh, excuse me to move this a little so it's more obvious when we're testing but now uh, if I change this from no to yes the entire thing changes and this this is going to be a really interesting behavior and it's because well, let me change the speed is too slow now 200 should be a good, a good number now it's going to bounce right so in this case because it's just going straight and you don't really have anything in an angle you're not going to have anything weird, but what if I change a little bit the angle of my bullet? Now you have something like that. And the only thing that you had to add was these elements that are solids, that have the solid behavior, and now you have a completely different behavior. It's not just moving, it's also finding the limits of this room or this well square that we added here and it's bouncing all over right so that's that's really cool and I've created a few uh, games that take advantage of this and and you can do several things just around uh, bullet now um, let's see I'm going to put him back uh, and uh, I'm going to leave it at that now the other thing that, that we have to do uh, so uh, there I'm going to give it a, an, an angle. It's the next one, the set angle. So one thing is the angle that we have uh, for our image. The other thing is the uh, uh, movement. So right now they are both aligned. So when we have that our bullet is going at an angle zero, well, that, that moves at the same time but what if I just want things to move in one direction but I don't want uh, I don't want um, um, I don't want the element to move in the same one so to illustrate this better I am going to find a graphic of a character and just show you so let me see so we're going to get a character so it's over here it this character okay uh, well let's make it a little bigger something like that so uh, whenever and let's change a little bit the layer because now I'll do it now something like this or perhaps something like this better okay so now if uh, I change if I execute this you see that my little alien is uh, bouncing, but not only that, it's also going upwards when this is happening. So what happens if I don't want that effect? What happens if I wanted to move in that direction, but not to change the direction or the orientation of my image? I just have to change this set angle from yes to no. And then you may have something like this. 
we have one orientation for the image and another orientation for the movement of the bullet. At this point, what you can do is to change the direction of the movement uh, of the movement of the bullet uh, movement. So what I'm going to do is at the start of the layout, I'm going to change the direction of the movement randomly. So I go here, player, and you see that in the actions we have an entire set of actions for the bullet. So in this case, I'm going to say set angle of motion, and I'm going to get a random number from a oh, random angle from 0 to 360. And now you see that it's moving randomly, but it's never changing the direction of the image. So depending on the kind of game that you want to do, this could be something that you want to do. So uh, why is the bullet behavior uh, useful? So let's suppose that you're creating some sort of um, platformer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this object. I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to change this one for another object, another color. So let's say page, gamma. Yeah, sure, why not? This guy. Uh, well, it's not the best one, so let's go for, for yellow. Okay. So, delta, this guy. Okay. So, what if I want to do some sort of like a trolling behavior? Uh, so that this guy is moving right and left and uh, I, I could control the limits of where it's moving. So how can I do that with just, uh, uh, let's say, bullet behavior? One of the things that I could do uh, is that I, I am going to copy this little wall that we have here. I'm going to make it smaller. Okay, and then I'm going to move it here. So that means that this one is going to be bouncing in between these two limits. If I did it right, of course. There you go. You see? So now, how do I adapt this to a uh, platform behavior? Uh, what I, or platform game? I could just say that these two are invisible. And and we're going to have something like this. This enemy is moving in between these two invisible walls that we have here, but it is just like going, going back and forward, right? So now, how can I make it look the other direction? Well, that's quite simple. Whenever I say that there is a collision between this second player, that is the name, now it's really an enemy, collision, with another object, that in this case could be a wall, I'm just going to change the direction that I could do it with a mirror. Uh, so, mi set mirror. And uh, so, mirrored first. Uh, okay, but then it's going to work the first time. I should. I should. check two cases. I'm going to add just simply an instance variable here mm. and it's going to is mirror okay and I'm going to make it a boolean and original is false that's good so then I can add this and I can ask uh, if this one if it's mirrored and that is not the first case, and then I'm going to add else. Um, I'm sorry, add else. So in this case, it's going to be this. If it's not mirrored, put it to mirrored, and if it's mirrored, oops, then set it to not mirrored. Okay, and now, hopefully, it will do it right. There you go. Oh. Oh, okay, but I haven't changed. Of course, I haven't changed the variable. 
So uh, what I'm going to do is just toggle uh, toggle boolean and then the same thing here and then it should work hopefully <laughs> there you go there you go so you see that um, right now this bullet behavior the only thing that is helping me with is just in how I uh, move the things Apart from that, I just can use some of the attributes like, uh, well, bouncing or not bouncing and then other things just to set it however I want. So basically most of the time that I need one sprite to move somehow, I use bullet. Unless it's some sort of like a custom behavior, custom movement, then uh, I need to, to figure out how to do it. Uh, in any case, the entire point here was just to give you a small intro on how to use bullet behavior with Construct 2 and I hope that that, that was uh, what I accomplished with this video. I hope that you liked it and just let me know uh, what you think uh, on my blog or my YouTube channel that you have it here uh, and well apart from that have a great weekend.